I'm uh, Marion Hewitt, so I uh, work um, independently now. I work as partly as a coach for HR, and then I also do um, a lot of mental health first aid, mental health awareness training. Um, and then I work with um, HR Recruit doing these things each week. And when we were looking at the topics, we thought actually there was a lot of discussion um, last year around um, diversity and inclusion, which was particularly um, focusing on racism. And we actually were thinking, how are we going to make sure that in HR we are maintaining the focus on diversity and inclusion this year? But actually also making sure that we are thinking about diversity and inclusion in its widest sense, all the different elements of it. So today is these sessions, those of you that haven't joined before, are very much discussions. It's not about, um, you know, listening. It's about, and there's, there's quite a few of us, I think we may go into some groups as well. But the areas we were thinking about would be actually what you can do to maintain focus this year if you started initiatives. Actually, how you can be really making sure that you are incorporating a wide perspective on diversity and inclusion. Something funny is happening with the typing on that one there. And then how we can work towards ensuring we under, really understand the different perspectives to bring about real change. So actually, you know, what are we doing to make sure that we actually get input from all areas? It's not just our perspective. So if I were to think about the different areas of diversity, I was thinking about, you know, age diverse workforces, dealing with um, disability, people that um, have got either physical or mental disability. Uh, the gender equality, race inclusion, release and re original and belief, uh, sexual orientation, gender identity, gender reassignment. So, you know, these are all aspects of the, the agenda. And just a few stats that I pulled up that actually over 50s make up over 31% of the workforce. And old workers find it harder to get new work. Um, lack of flexibility can help can do that but actually a lot of employers can be heading towards skill shortages if they're not thinking about how to attract um, and actually want to include older workers we're actually hearing in relation to the current pandemic the impact on early career years for younger people so again how are we making sure our recruitment practices are really open and equally accessible to all age groups Seven million people have a disability, registered with a disability, which or a long-term health condition, but actually only half of those are in work. So what um, talent, resource, skills are we missing out on by not um, creating enabling work environments? We still have a UK-wide gender pay gap of 17.3%. And the researchers found that there is still a motherhood penalty that you know, any woman who leaves paid work for even a short time or works on reduced hours is more likely to be in a low paid or a low skilled job and remain there. There was a target for women to be um, make up at least a third of boards by the end of 2020. I couldn't find anything to find out whether actually that was achieved. It's probably too early to say that. To say the last thing I saw was that um, by the end of 2019, it looked on track to get there. The race inclusion, um, so BAME, BA, BAME groups um, has got 62% employment compared to 75.6 for white. And then the last um, figure that I put in there was actually over a third of LGBT plus people have hidden their sexual orientation at work. So just a little bit of, yeah, just a few things to think about because, you know, we want to make sure that when we are looking at our diversity and inclusion, we are thinking about all elements of it and all stages of the employee life cycle. Um, oh, I don't seem to have breakout rooms going. H, um, have you got a breakout room? Joe, you're, you're muted. Yeah, just bear with me. I just I didn't transfer you to be the host. One second. I think because we have got quite a, a yeah. large group, and we do try and keep the, these quite timely. I suggest that we'll uh, we'll go into three groups for um, 
what should we do? Let, let's just do it for 10 minutes and then we can come back and you can tell your key things that, that you've thought about. So actually, whether you want to think about what you've done so far, although quite a lot of you said you were at the start of all your plans, but actually, you know, what are, perhaps, perhaps actually the question for now is, we've raised the awareness, you're here that you want to, what are your challenges? Maybe it was Mark, somebody said about actually to get business buy-in to actually recognize it. So what are your challenges? on the diversity and inclusion agenda. So let's start by thinking about that for, for, um, for 10 minutes and they'll come back, share ideas, and then we can look at what we're going to do, you know, how we can take that forward. Okay, all right, so I've got breakout rooms now. So uh, that will be right. I'll put into three groups, that gives um, five per room. So we will, I will see you in 10 minutes. Uh, I think Joe, you might go into one, but you can come back out or you can join in the discussion as you like. Yes. Uh, hang on for the next 10 minutes. Oh. Hi guys. Hi. Hi. Hi uh... Mark, do you want to unmute yourself? Sorry for what happened. <laughs> <laughs> So does anyone want to kick off and basically say what their business has been doing or businesses they've worked in previously? So while my place, nothing has happened yet. They're just starting to look at it. It's just become part of the agenda. So um, they are now Borg Warner. So they've been, they were Delphi Technologies and they've just been bought by Borg Warner and Borg Warner is an American company. So it's very much on their agenda. So it's coming into to our team, but how that shaped or looks like, we don't know yet. Um, so it'd be really interesting, I guess, to see from other points of view. Before that, I was working at a um, trampolining arenas where it just uh, was, wasn't going to be on the agenda because they were startup. So they were just trying to get uh, feet under the table. So yeah, it'd be interesting to see what other people have um, got going on. I mean, we haven't really got anything in our business. We are only a smallish business. Um, and I think that's the issue, isn't it? That um, a lot of businesses, it isn't on the agenda. And unless you focus on it and make specific steps, then I think people just cross the fingers and hope it happens really. Yeah. Um, and I think obviously with other priorities on the agenda at the moment, it's not at the forefront, but, but that's, that's the issue. I mean, we, um, we sent out um, some information to a group of people, um, I think last week, and it, it was something that we just never even thought about. And what we'd done was we took a picture of an event that we did last year. And it was um, for a finance event because part within our group, we recruit for finance people as well. And I think predominantly this photograph was, was mainly white males. We didn't think anything of it. The fact was we just wanted to highlight that we'd done an event and, and we were sort of saying, look, you know, this was a successful event and we want to be invited to others. And a candidate responded to me and said, um, not really sure that that photograph is, is the right thing for diversity. Well, we just never even thought about it. We, you know, we haven't done anything intentionally. You know, my boss is, is really open-minded. But I think it, until people prick your conscience, you don't think about it. And I think that's the, that's the issue. I don't know what, you know, other people think. Yeah, what's really interesting about diversity and inclusion, so I'm passionate about it. I've been passionate about it for a couple of years. I've been in HR for about 11, 12 years, and our MD challenged us earlier this year to go, hang on a minute, why does none of us know anything about diversity, inclusion, and belonging? Why don't you know anything from an L&D perspective? Why don't you know anything from a HR perspective? So right there, it was like, crap we like literally when we're, we're not really taught much about this area but as i am learning and i'm going through um diversity inclusion and belonging because i'm the lead in it i'm realizing how specialist it is and that actually there are a lot of hidden barriers 
and blockers and in our systems, in our processes, in our policies, in everything, whether it's images, in our communication, mm -hmm. everything we do, it, it, it's, it's ingrained in everything we do. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's um, the good, the, the, I suppose the good thing for me from a Yo Valley perspective, so I've never dabbled in diversity, inclusion, belonging before. I was passionate about it. I shared my passion last year within the organization when with the exec team, but they weren't ready. They weren't there yet. They were like, yeah, yeah, if you want to do some stuff, go on and crack on and do it. But I know that if, if they're not behind me, mm. ain't nothing going to change. Um, so we put together a people strategy earlier this year and we shared it with our MD in May before the George Floyd incident. And that was when he was kind of like, I want this to be number one on our people plan. I want this to be our, uh, number one in terms of our people priorities. I want this embedded in our culture. We, we, this is our focus, which was really to have an MD that mm. is, he's, he's all about the people anyway, but it's kind mm. of saying we are leading in this. We need to do something about it. Um, before kind of the trend, I suppose, um, took place is, is, is really good. Mm. So um, the challenges I'm finding at this present moment in time is, including myself, is the lack of knowledge and understanding of diversity inclusion. And that actually, it's not a tick box exercise, it's not a mm. number of activities, let's do, you know, let's increase our um, diverse population and underrepresented groups, let's do some events, let's, it's, it's more, it's more than that. So my challenge is there's the front end stuff, I suppose, which is the stuff that people see, but there's right. a lot of back end stuff that needs from a system, processes, policies, um, just how we do things in, in every day because of our biases is that that also needs to be fixed um, and I'm leading in putting together a, a strategy and a, and a plan and what I suppose my challenge is is actually I can't now move forward with that because what I really need to do and understand is actually what are what are we like to what what is our diversity and our representation like within our organization you know are we an inclusive environment and um, if we're not like your what you mentioned earlier about the images what are the things we we basically need to audit ourselves and understand mm -hmm. actually where we are um as an organization before then we potentially could move forward um so my challenge is people want things to happen now <laughs> and i'm like whoa there's a lot, there's a lot to do. So there's a lot. And, and the great thing about this um, also is that we've got a lot of people, our leadership group are really behind it as well. So everybody wants to do something about it, which is really good, mm. but it's just trying to ensure that it's kind of all tied up in our overall strategy and purpose mm. as a whole. Taking too much time, that's me. <laughs> oh, keep up. No, no, not at all. Okay. Good. I think, yeah, I think it's it's the same as anything, isn't it? If um, the senior team aren't behind it, let's face it, it's, it's a bit of a losing battle, really. I think you also, as you said, need to make it meaningful. Yeah. You know, there's so many people that are, you know, jumping on the bandwagon of, you know, I want to show that we are, um, you know, inclusive and we're diverse, but, and in their recruitment, there's a box that you tick, you know, it's it's got to be more than that. It's got to, it's got to mean something. So... I think like you said, there's so many steps before yeah. getting to this, we are an inclusive brand, this is what we do. Yeah. You've got so much work to do in the background first. Yeah. And part of that is finding out how does your teams feel? You know, yeah. in automotive where I am, it's white males. You know, 50 year old white males, everyone. There is, and then, and then the HR team's all female. Mm. Yeah. You know, that's, that's where you get the females in this place is, is, is yeah. in HR and that's it. So, um, it's yeah it's looking actually inside yourself and saying right where are your where are your blind spots because I'm sure we've all got lots of them mm, for sure you know the system has been built <clears throat> to you know that way for many years so it's like how do we how do we as a business change the mm. things that we automatically do and our, and check ourselves our own biases you know which we all will have I think as well, though, it's not just it's not just businesses, is it? It's everything. So, I mean, I'm, I'm going back a long, long time. But I know when I was doing um, when I was at university, I had to do a, a work placement and it was a, it was for a tire manufacturer and their workforce was very similar to yours, Olivia. And I had to look at how do you try and attract females into it? And it starts with, you know, like 
college courses, university courses. And so it isn't just your business. It's, yeah. it's everything. Yeah. And I think unless, unless lots of things, are, you know, sort of tied together, it, it makes it very difficult. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Actually, we're looking internally and externally. The focus mainly is our, our people internally, but also we're looking at the community mm. perspective as well. And um, we are looking into the, 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 the younger, I suppose, generation in terms of actually we haven't got much of a diverse um, population representation within our organization because we're heavily dominant in manufacturing. It, it tends to be males. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what, what's the... What, what's the reason for it and actually what is it that we can be doing externally within our communities around all of our sites to understand and help and support and 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 be more inclusive so you yeah we're looking at it internally mm. as well as externally but it impacts absolutely everything mm, mm, mm. but I think especially if you're in a manufacturing we can you know go to schools and say this is actually what these roles look like this is how they work you could come and do an apprenticeship you know i think that's the joy of of our jobs though they are heavily male and 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 orientated orientated at the moment we probably do have a better way of getting people in mm. because of those schemes that you could use mm. definitely right welcome back um I was getting bored in the room on my own, so I joined one of the breakout rooms. There were certainly um, some good debates happening in there. So I don't know, would somebody like to start from, uh, I don't know, um, Wendy's room, Wendy, Amanda, Emma, what were your key themes in your conversation? Well, Sarah was just about to speak and we suddenly got shot into back into the room. So. <laughs> <laughs> we were like, what, 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 gone. All right, well, uh, carry on where you, were, where you were cut off then. Sorry, then, but for our group, just quickly, um, it's pleasing to see that the government um, this time around for, for furlough and flexi furlough are allowing um, you, know, you to be furloughed for care responsibility. So a tiny step, but a step in the right direction. So it's good to see mm -hmm. that that's been incorporated this time around for this lockdown. Thank you. What other comments for was your discussion in your that group then? Anybody want to volunteer anything? We're actually comparing different organisations. Like mine was very male orientated, and how do we attract different um, you know people to that? And uh, was it you, Sue? Um, was talking about it's completely opposite and it was females and we started talking about how we attract people and the benefits you know do we use the flexible working because we literally said a year ago you know if you wanted to work one day from home it was a uh, questionable and now here we are working from home since last mm. month um, so very traditional and how we've got to get across the change of those boundaries because you know Emma was sort of saying if, if you're pregnant and you want maternity, great, great. But if you are a carer and you need time off for other things, then it's questionable in a lot of industries. Mm. So we get across a lot of how different commitments people have got mm. and how that can have an effect on, on your home and work life. Mm. Then and it's interesting watching groups. even the assumptions we're making about you know to attract more women increase flexible working and because that you know that's how the world works from our view of it but actually the other way is how can we encourage men to work more flexibly yeah so that, yeah. you know we I've been the, yeah I've been the full-time worker and my husband has been at home he's got mm -hmm. a, a property business that he's been able to do from home so our role is reversed um, but people again think that is strange yeah it's interesting because my husband uh, went down to four days uh, from April. He's an accountant. And actually the amount of, I'm going to call it backlash, um, he got from people, oh, you're working four days. Um, you know, he, he's kind of uh, in, his, in his late 40s. It was just, mm -hmm. um, it was really, you know, really interesting. I, I think the pressure now, he's actually going to go back to full time because, you know, he feels that, He's been a bit discounted, if that makes sense. Uh, so, yeah, interesting from a male point of view. Yeah. 
What about, thank you. What about group four? So that was a, uh, no, group three even. Uh, Mark, Olivia, your group, what was the sort of themes of your discussion? Anyone, want, anyone from that group want to? Um, so yeah, we talked about um, kind of getting it onto the agenda is the, one of the first hurdles is getting it, you've got to have the promotion from your leaders. They need to be bought into it. Um, and also to make sure that it's meaningful, that it's not a tick box exercise that you, um, you know, look at your blind spots, look at where your teams currently sit and how they feel about your, um, your current situation and where you're at. And then also um, looking at not just how it looks, what processes and procedures need to change, where it sits within policy, where there's bias, where you've got your own bias and look at yourself. Um, and we talked about how you can also um, time with the community and ensure that actually you can be inclusive, but if you aren't going to get the workforce in because your community isn't, you know, also representative, then how can you as a business um, influence that? Thank you. Um, group one, Claire, Joe, one of you want to summarise the discussion in that group? Claire, you were sharing quite a lot of the things that you've been doing. Sorry, I've got Sorry a... you're having your lunch, aren't you? Oh, <laughs> um, we started talking about how you start a DEI program, really, mm. and some of the um, problems or challenges around finding meaningful metrics um, and, and, and defining what it means. And um, somebody brought up, I think it was you, wasn't it? It said something really useful about do we actually need to measure it with metrics? Is it not about doing the right thing? So that sparked a bit of debate as well. Yes, that's what we were talking about at the end, wasn't it? Yes. What was the yeah. conclusion of that, just out of interest? <laughs> sadly, sadly, we can't have the answer with that. I think you know, it's more one of those moral debates. It was something that I read the other day that just really resonated with me. Yeah, you know, we've got all this drive for HR to make it measurable and using analytics and metrics. But actually, at some point, when is it about, in some areas, is it about doing the right thing? Mm. And why should we have to justify that with a business case? Because yeah. actually doing the right thing and creating an environment where people are able to do their best, feel their best, there will be a bottom line positive impact. Mm. But you might not be able to get that measure up front. Mm. And that just really resonated with me in, in sort of lots of different areas. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree um, at the same time, because it's quite a new, I suppose people, the, the businesses are kind of, it's a new thing for businesses. If it doesn't kind of get measured, things don't get done. So yeah, I'm, I'm wondering whether actually if we, if, you know, if we don't measure our progress as we go through this journey, um, then things may, may not happen. But hopefully if we do measure it, things will naturally start to change mm. when then we don't have to measure it going forward. Yeah. I mean, I think it's part of, you know, HR being valued at the same level of, of finance. Yeah. You yeah. Know, it's how we get that, that thing um, you know, discussed and, and assessed and done properly. Um, something that was interesting as a point that was made was about somebody said that they were frightened as in it is such a sensitive area, you know, how is the best way to approach it? You know, how do you get people on board? How do you raise the awareness? So just wondering what people's thoughts were, perspectives on that. I mean, when I, when I talk about it um, at the moment, my, my first phrase when I'm doing presenting is it's a really uncomfortable topic. And it's uncomfortable because it's usually based on underrepresentation or some forms of marginalization or oh right, sorry. you're back again yeah sorry Carry i don't on. know what happened there <laughs> um so yeah I, I i always start saying that it's an uncomfortable topic because it's based on you know, oppression and like and um, underrepresentation, uh, marginalisation, etc. So we have to start to get comfortable with being uncomfortable, mm -hmm. and actually, we need to create a safe environment where, if we want to create an inclusive environment, every opinion, every you know, differences, it it matters, and we need to 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 speak up and actually learn from one another. So, if you voted conservative. Oh, 
why did you vote Conservative? If you mm. voted Labour, why did let's let's talk about it. Let's let's learn from each other in terms of our different perspectives. So I always always start saying it's uncomfortable, <laughs> mm. um, but we 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 have to start speak speaking up in in relation to it. And it's also about creating what I'm now trying to think about is creating environments or safe spaces where people can have these conversations that they tend to not be able to have in outside of organizations so it's creating those spaces so we can kind of get used to talking with talking about these uh these um topics thank you other thoughts on that What about the, because somebody raised the question when they were asking people in their organisation, the employees were saying there wasn't an issue, they didn't have any issues with it. Can any organisation really in all conscience believe that they have no issues in terms of full diversity and inclusion or are there unconscious biases coming into those perspectives? I think sometimes, Marion, it's about what, what you don't know, you don't know, isn't it? Because you might be sat in your organisation thinking everything's, you know, rosy. And then when you speak to other businesses and they start explaining their stats and what they do, you could then start thinking, oh, well, actually, we haven't got that. We don't do that. We could do this. And I think some of it is it's what you don't know. Yeah, yeah. So I, I completely agree. And I, I think it's about just actually understand what are your people saying within the organisation? How are they feeling? So we may say there may not be a problem, but we have we asked our people to understand if there is. Mm -hmm. I think it starts and, there and with the data mm -hmm. as well. And have yeah, we not I got just... a problem because actually we don't have diversity because actually everybody is the same. Everybody's comfortable and nothing's being challenged in their world. Precisely. And that's where I suppose the research and the evidence comes in, in terms of actually, if you do have a diverse amount of people, this is what it could mean from a business perspective, commercially going forward. So it's bringing in those kind of cases and information, if that is the case. And that's part of the measuring argument, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So we can't just do what's being measured. You know, there's an element of we've got to do things that are right and we've got to do other things as well, whether or not they're being measured. But the yeah. measuring will help those arguments and also yeah. help see progress too. Let's go back into the groups for a few minutes and bearing in mind that the main topic of this was around maintaining focus and give you uh, a few minutes to think about actually, you know, what are the next things you want to achieve? How, how will you be measuring your success on terms of the, the wider diversity and inclusion? And then hopefully that will give you an opportunity to um, share some ideas. Uh, Joe, how do you want to do on time? It's sort of eight minutes past. You just want five minutes in the rooms? I'm just, I know we're fairly fluid on the times, but yeah. I don't want to go too far over. Mm -hmm. So just five minutes on, on, I'll put you back in the same group. So that, cause you've already sort of introduced yourselves to each other. So just five minutes in terms of what are going to be the next things that you want to address and then you can um, perhaps share ideas. All right. So I will see you back in five minutes.